Hey guys, David here. So I'm just going to do a quick video. Um, it's going to be a review on two ultralight reels that I recently bought. Um, and more particularly, I want to focus on this Daiwa QZ750. Um, I don't see really any reviews for it, so I'm going to throw one out there for you guys. So it's an ultralight reel. Um, this thing was really hard to find. I was just looking for something for panfish just to go out fishing with my son. Um, and I'm going to be comparing it to this Fluger Press P20 that it's going to be replacing. Um, so I'm going to start from the bottom up with this reel, just going through what I like, what I don't like. So to start, <clears throat> let's see, actually I'll start at the handle. So first thing you notice is this cork material is the knob. Um, it's pretty comfortable. I'm just, the only thing I worry about is it discoloring. It will. There's no doubt about it in my mind. Um, I didn't actually take this piece off. I'm curious how that's secured on there. Um, so it's okay. It's comfortable, but it's going to discolor. And then as you move farther down the lever, you have a nice folding handle. So it's good for if you're going to go on trips and that type of thing or throw this in your backpack or you have a multi-piece travel rod probably a good idea um, to take off the handle you unscrew this this spins off and then the handle will pop out and then if you need to change sides of the lever the sides of the handle you can do that so that's how you take that off <clears throat> uh, graphite body and then next thing I hit is the hardware on here. So this is all stainless and it uses Allen bolts, which is really good. It makes it a lot, um, I find it a lot easier to get those out rather than the janky Phillips heads on some of the other reels. Uh, let's see. All right, you have optional reverse if you need it. Speaking of reverse, it has, most reels nowadays have infinite anti-reverse and this one's pretty instant on here um, works really well and then moving up the reel so you have the <clears throat> the bail the bail body that's on there really sturdily um, usually with cheap reels this thing will have a nice wobble to it but um this doesn't this thing's like 50 60 bucks um, nice and sturdily built and then moving up to the spool, I like to check the play on side to side play on the spool and it's tightened down and it's all the way up in travel right about there. There's like no travel at all, I'm wiggling it side to side, nothing, so it's good. Um, it has a little line keeper on there, some rails don't nowadays for some reason. It has aluminum spool, it's nicely machined. Nice solid uh, disengagement when the bail comes back down. So these, the Daiwa QZ750 has six roller bear, six ball bearings, and then one roller bearing. Um, so that roller bearing is going to be in the center on the um, the shaft in the center that helps with the anti reverse. Um, trying to think what else with this guy. So I actually have the specs on this. I just wrote them on a piece of paper for you guys. So gear ratio, weight, it's the same as the reel I'll be going um, to review next. It has seven pounds of drag, 22.8 inches of line recovery per full turn of the handle, um, four pound mono capacity, it's 110 yards, and then six pound braid, 220. Um, so I found that interesting because, let me see. So if you look at the spools compared side by side, the Daiwa 750 is actually considerably larger with a, the amount of line you can put on there, the line capacity. But the interesting thing is the, I'm going to call it the footprint, the actual body of the, the overall size of the reel is smaller than this one and especially the grip area. I feel like this is a lot longer 
and this reel, this one's pretty short, so it's nice and compact. Tiny little reel. Um, I've used this thing three times so far. It's been a great, great reel. No weird noises. Um, I don't notice a ton of play in the handle. Do I think I don't really have any cons to it? And a nice, nice smooth drag. It's, it doesn't feel clunky. I mean, without, I don't have a better term for it. But some cheap reels, um, they're inconsistent when when um, lines going out. But that's really it. Um, great reel, really light, nice and compact. I love the folding handle. Um, I'm surprised with the amount of, like, I think this thing's pretty high quality for the most part. I'm surprised that this handle just doesn't spin off backwards like most other reels do nowadays. But really good reel, really light. I think it's a pretty beautiful little reel. All right. All right, next is this reel that's um, a Fluger Press P20. Um, here there's the specs on that. So max drag is less, line recovery is less, um, line capacity is way less. All right, <clears throat> now as far as features on the reel, physical features, um, this section right here, the reel, the reel seat, and this part right here is definitely longer than the, the 750. Um, and starting at the knob again, normal knob, it's rubber. Um, moving up, and this is what I was talking about. I'm surprised the Dyawa doesn't have this feature where you could just spin the handle off. Um, this one has it, which is nice. And then next up is the hardware. So it has stainless fillet bolts that I'm not a huge fan of on reels, but most reels have it. But um, this Daiwa has Allen head keys, which is fantastic. I love that. And then let's see. I'm going to check on the play of the handle inside the body. It's not much. And then the bail body. I'm going to see if there's any play in it. Actually, is actually is a good amount of play. Um, then the spool. Let's see. Let's see how much play that has. Yeah, that has a ton of play in it, and that's with the drag almost all the way down. Yep, the dyer we didn't have that. <clears throat> um, Nice disengagement of the veil. So the thing is, I've used this thing maybe six times. The thing that made me really upset with this reel, the reason why I'm replacing it is there's this weird piece right here, right next to the, um, right on the bail. This plastic piece right here has this point on it and there's actually a little crevice right there. So when you're casting or retrieving, the line actually gets wedged in there. And then you have to yank it out. And if it's two pound test, it's gonna damage the line pretty badly. Um, and that is the main reason why I'm replacing this reel. Um, the sad thing is it was like 50, 60 bucks. So it's too bad. Um, then as far as the spool material itself, aluminum has a line keeper tab on it. And as far as noise, this thing, yeah, it's it's pretty quiet for the most part, but um, the, <clears throat> the anti reverse has some major lash on it, so there's definitely some play in the anti reverse bearing. So that's the roller bearing. Um, this one nearly the diode didn't really have that much; it has almost nothing, and then it's nice and smooth. Um, so I can definitely recommend for the money. Both of them are like fifty, sixty dollar range. I could. Definitely recommend the QZ750. I've used it a couple times. Drag smooth, works well. Nice and light, compact. Folding handle, um, good hardware on it. And more than enough line capacity for a panfish. That's really it. And it goes with any color rod, it's gold and black. Fluger, pros about it, I mean, 
Yeah, it's okay rail. I mean, it's smooth and does the job, I guess, but for the money, I'd expect more from it. And the deal breaker for me was this right here, catching the line in the middle of a cast or retrieving. That was maybe really upset. Um, other than that, it was an okay reel, and then there is some play in it, which I'm surprised for the price point. Well, after having this, it's easy to get upset with it, but tons of play in the <clears throat> the shaft. So would I recommend it? Mm, no, not for the price. If it was probably like $40, maybe, I'd say yes, but 60, 50, 60 bucks, no. Um, this thing was 60, yes, I would recommend it. Um, smooth, light, compact, I don't. I'm a big fan of Daiwa products. They haven't failed me at knock on wood. So um, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a like and subscribe. And I have a video up of me using this for like big bluegill and I caught a couple small smallmouth bass on it. Um, good video, you should watch it. I think I'm gonna link it in, or uh, put a, um, a card in the this video so you guys can give it, give it a watch. So, all right. Hope you guys like this. Please like and subscribe.